If you are a fitness coach, you know how popular cycle syncing is becoming and hormone balance is becoming, and you may have had your clients ask about it. And if you have not, you're here because you're curious about it. So if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, go ahead and do so by clicking that subscribe button somewhere down below here. And when you do make sure to click that bell to be notified every time I post a new video on menstrual cycle health, fitness, and nutrition education for personal trainers. And today we are going to do a deep dive into sports nutrition for the menstrual cycle so that you can help your clients get better results. And as always, we're bringing in some recent research papers here. And I think above all else, the most common, uh, I guess comment I hear when it comes to the menstrual cycle from coaches is that there's not enough research. So I wanna bust that myth. There is a lot of research and you're gonna learn some here. If you are excited about that, give this video a like. And if you don't know me yet, hello, my name is Omega Zumpano. I am an exercise scientist and menstrual cycle educator and founder of one of the first certifications to help personal trainers balance and optimize their clients' hormones. So if you are curious to learn more about exactly how to do that and my strategy that has helped so many coaches, you can click the link down below and apply for the program. And I wanna bring in one of the coaches that I've worked with already. I'm pulling up her testimonial right here. Her name is Anastasia. And I'll just read you the highlighted portion. She says that her clients are achieving amazing results. They're more in tune with their bodies. That's awesome. They understand their fluctuating energy levels. Awesome. They are consistent and they're reaching their weight loss, muscle gain, endurance, and improved energy goals. And that is because she is periodizing to the cycle, not only their fitness, but their nutrition as well. So by the end of this video, you are gonna know exactly how to do that. We're gonna go through each phase of the menstrual cycle in order. So first things first, we have the menstrual phase and we'll be discussing exercise and nutrition in each of those phases. So first, I want you to understand that research typically breaks down the whole menstrual cycle into two parts, the follicular phase and the, uh, and the luteal phase. And it's separated by ovulation. And ovulation is an event. It's not as much as a phase. However, we characterize it as a phase because of the um, hormone and energy differences that are happening. So let's go over each subphase, which is like menstrual phase, follicular phase, ovulatory phase, luteal phase. And if you wanna write those all down because you're not familiar with the cycle, go ahead, grab the pen, grab your notebook and write those down. Um, so that we have the four phases and they happen in that order. And if we're talking about just the follicular phase and the ovulatory phase, then the menstrual and follicular phase get grouped into one. And the, I guess the ovulatory and luteal phase gets lumped into one. And so now let's take this and let's bring it back down into four parts. First, we have the menstrual phase. And what's happening with exercise in the menstrual phase, um, one article by Romero Para says that we have increased delayed onset muscle soreness in this phase. And you might be thinking, well, why, why is that? And my answer for that is that our hormones are lowest in the menstrual phase. And with that, estrogen and testosterone can't do its job, its job that it does during exercise, which is heal and grow muscle tissue. And so our job as coaches is to recognize where our client's energy capacity is during that phase and meet them where they're at. So there was also a study by Carmichael and colleagues and what they showed was that anaerobic strength and aerobic capacity all change throughout the cycle. And if you want a refresher on anaero what is anaerobic and what is aerobic, anaerobic is like a one rep max and aerobic is like endurance exercise. So with anaerobic performance, there was, I'm looking at the graph right here, anaerobic performance was actually better in the quote unquote bleed phase than it was in the late luteal phase. And aerobic performance was actually really good in the 
bleed phase as well. What wasn't so good in the bleed phase was strength performance. So put that in the back of your mind as anaerobic and aerobic performance are really good in this phase. Strength performance, like doing like four to 12 reps of anything, not so great. With that, let's talk about nutrition. So there was another great study by Wogelmuth and colleagues that showed us in the, they broke down the cycle into two phases. So they have the follicular and they have the luteal phase. And what they found in the follicular phase is that we actually have more carb tolerance. We use carbs more efficiently and we use fat less efficiently when compared to the luteal phase. So let's synthesize all of this information here. Your, your client or you might have more delayed onset muscle soreness in this phase. And based on another research article that looked at 40 different research articles, the one by Carmichael, we know that uh, anaerobic performance and aerobic performance could take a boost. And we know that we use carbs more efficiently in the follicular phase, which again is from the bleed phase to ovulation. And so with that, we can summarize a few things. One, it's most important to get to know yourself slash your client when designing any periodized program, right? So you need to find out if your client, one, if their goals are more anaerobic and strength-based or if their goals are more aerobic-based. And with that, help them figure out what their energy capacity is in their bleed phase. And secondly, increase carbs a little bit. They might want more carbs in their bleed phase anyway because of cravings and things like that. So get to know what your client needs and then provide that for them. There's also a conversation to be had about iron in this phase as well. We lose a lot of iron when we're bleeding out of our vagina. So vagina, I said that weird. Anyway, we're gonna gloss over that. We are losing lots of iron. So to replace with high iron foods is going to be very beneficial. There is a lot of research also supporting the idea that iron is synthesized better with vitamin C. And so doing a combination of iron and vitamin C with meals or without meals might be really beneficial for your clients. So personally, I have low iron and I make sure that dirt before, during and after my bleed phase, when I'm bleeding, I'm right now pregnant, but before, during and after my bleed phase, I get enough iron with vitamin C that is. So good sources of iron, obviously red meat, um, kale can have iron, black beans, pinto beans, black eyed peas, also great sources of iron, great sources of vitamin C, we have things like phytonutrients, so um, any, any red fruit, grapefruit, citrus, um, bell peppers. Getting vitamin C raw is probably best and vitamin C oxidizes quickly when it's cut into. So a melon can lose, I, I think it's something like up to 20% of its vitamin C if it's left out for like five to 15 minutes without being covered. Anyway, the minutia of it all. Okay, so high iron, high vitamin C, carbs obviously, and then obviously help your clients get enough protein and fat too, but understand that carbs are used more efficiently during this phase of the cycle. Same with the next phase of the cycle that we're going into, which is the follicular phase. Hormonally, what's happening in the follicular phase is that estrogen and testosterone are increasing. So we get that boost in muscle recovery and muscle growth. And with that, we can program design more strength exercises because we have better strength performance and strength outcomes in this phase. We also have great aerobic performance in this phase too. So planning, endurance type activities is going to be great in this phase. We again have more of a carb tolerance, less protein catabolism. And to be clear, that doesn't mean that your client should eat less protein. <laughs> um, it just means that we're going to break down less muscle tissue, which becomes incredibly important, let's say in the, in the luteal phase. So that being said, we can do more strength oriented exercise and endurance oriented exercise. And we have less 
of a demand on our muscles for protein. Um, does that again mean that your body needs less protein? No. Um, so estrogen is also, I'm sorry, I'm looking at my notes again. I feel like every time I look at my notes, I need to announce it. Um, estrogen is also anabolic, meaning that it can, again, I keep saying this and I think I say it in almost all my videos, heal and grow muscle tissue. So to take advantage of that as a coach is going to be incredibly wonderful for you. Um, also nutrient timing. Um, there aren't a lot of research articles on the menstrual cycle and nutrient timing. Um, for muscle recovery. However, we do know that nutrient timing is a thing for sports performance. So why not time protein and carb intake appropriately for your clients here too? Um, getting a, a carb, a simple carb heavy meal prior to exercise, like whatever your client's gastrointestinal tract can tolerate, of course, and then getting a protein carb combination after exercise is just going to help them recover better. So as you're doing more strength and um, aerobic slash endurance type of exercises in this phase, protein and carb replacement after is going to support them. There's also something that is presented in the Wogelmuth study um, called glycogen supercompensation, which means that we take glucose that we eat, put it in our muscles and essentially save it for a rainy day. So we have more capacity at certain times of the cycle to take in glucose, convert it into glycogen and then use it for another exercise. However, I do remember in that article, they specifically said about the glycogen supercompensation that more research needs to be done on that. Okay, so that's the follicular phase. And then we have the ovulatory phase. And what I, what I thought was really interesting about this Carmichael article is that they said that aerobic performance is not as good as strength and anaerobic performance in this phase. And so let's, let's take all the nutrition recommendations that we've given in the follicular phase. We can apply it to the ovulatory phase. And for sport, for I guess sports training, performance training, whatever you wanna call it, we're gonna to wanna to focus on strength and anaerobic performance most in this quote unquote phase. Remember ovulation is an event, but the days surrounding it are when estrogen and testosterone are the highest. Remember those two hormones are anabolic, which means that we can use them to our client's advantage when it comes to cyclical periodization, baby. And so with that, um, yeah, just make sure your clients are getting a protein and carb heavy meal to help heal and grow muscle tissue because that is what the hormones are doing anyway. And now let's skip into the luteal phase. This is the most interesting phase to me in general because I mean, there's, there's so much biologically happening with the body clearing estrogen and increasing progesterone intake. And so this is where, um, this is where things get interesting in terms of nutrition need. Now there was an article that I've posted about many times by Draper and colleagues showed us what nutrition we can use to prevent PMS. A result of nutrient insufficiency, I'll call it, is PMS. And PMS can actually be resolved, mitigated, and even prevented with proper nutrition because if your client is having anxiety bloating breast tenderness cramps fatigue irritability they're not going to show up as best as they can when it comes to workout performance if we take the proper measures for sports nutrition then we can actually help mitigate what's going on um, in our in our luteal phase in terms of nutrition. So let's get into it. This article by Draper and colleagues showed that magnesium can help prevent PMS. Um, this article also showed that omega-3s can help prevent pain-oriented PMS. So if your client has cramps or migraines or headaches, omega-3s is a great one to take. There was also a study that showed us that Omega-3s are incredibly amazing at managing cramps over like a three month period. People with intense and incredible cramps actually decrease their cramps to mild cramps. 
omega threes, anybody. Um, amino acids become incredibly important because the inner lining of the uterus is actually using a lot of amino acids to um, build the lining of the uterus in case pregnancy happens. And then there's vitamin T, vitamin D, not T, vitamin D as well, which has progesterone-like activities. And if you know anything about the menstrual cycle, you know that in the luteal phase, we want to create progesterone. So vitamin D is going to help our clients do that. So those are some micronutrients to focus on. And another question that I get asked all the time by my own clients is, can I supplement? And sure you can supplement, but food, actual food has cofactors that we absolutely need in order to synthesize and activate certain minerals that we're eating, vitamins and minerals and all sorts of things. So I always go with a food first approach. So again, that list is magnesium, omega-3s, amino acids, and vitamin D. Make sure you're getting all of those things. And then let's talk about the study from Wogelmuth and what they saw. But before that, if you are here and if you are liking this video still, go ahead, press that like button if you haven't already. And if you have a question, comment, or hilarious remark, make sure to post it in the comment section below. I love hearing from you. And if you, this is really like lighting up your senses and if you're like, I want to learn more from this woman, Omega, then you can apply for the Confident Menstrual Cycle Coach Academy. Application is below, and this is really only appropriate for personal trainers. If you are not a personal trainer, but you are really into what I'm talking about, I have other programs that you can join too that are not application-based, cyclical fitness coaching, nutrition, and pre-MS prevention. And you can find all that using the link below as well. Anyway, okay, let's get into that Wogelmuth article and go into what Wogelmuth and colleagues said about nutrition for this phase of the cycle. They said that in terms of sports performance, we're actually using more fat for energy. In addition to that, we are a little bit more insulin resistant. So we don't use carbs as efficiently in this phase of the cycle. We are also a little bit more catabolic, meaning we use more protein. Again, those amino acids are building the lining of the uterus. Um, so we're gonna use more protein for that purpose, but for some reason, we're just more catabolic in this phase too. So some sports nutrition ideas that I have for you are to increase protein intake and make sure that you're getting enough carbohydrate from complex sources. So something that happens in the luteal phase, if we're not getting enough nutritious food, our body is going to turn on cravings so that we do eat enough. And that is one of the PMS symptoms that the article uh, by Brunvels and colleagues covers. This experience we have around cravings can be mitigated by balancing our blood sugar, and I'm sure you agree. So eating fiber, fat, and protein every two to four hours is not only gonna work to mitigate the blood sugar imbalances that are so common and prevalent in the luteal phase, but it's also going to work to perhaps get more of the micronutrients that we know that we need during this phase. Again, that is vitamin D, omega-3s, magnesium, anything else? Oh, amino acids, right. We gotta get those amino acids in. Something that you may have already heard is uh, metabolism in the luteal phase. Do we have an increase in metabolism? We do, it's about 100 to 200 calories, um, depending on your client's BMR and TDEE. And so let's focus less on like, oh my gosh, I have to get 100 to 200 more calories a day. And let's focus more on getting more nutrition in our clients' bodies during this phase of the cycle. Um, focusing on those, those nutrients that I just mentioned. The last thing I wanna talk about is, uh, oh, the second to last thing I wanna talk about is the type of training that is most appropriate in this phase. So I'm not gonna get into this because I already did a video on luteal phase training and I'll post it here and I, I will link that in the description section below. Make a little note with your pen uh, to watch that video if you haven't already. It breaks down our um, strength, aerobic and anaerobic capacity in the 
three, three sub phases of the luteal phase. So if you really want to periodize your own or your client's programs in a way that super takes advantage of the menstrual cycle, I highly recommend that you watch that video. So the last thing I want to talk about is the potential sleep disturbances that arise in the luteal phase and the decreased amount of sleep and how that can impact uh, workout performance as well. With the increase in progesterone and then the rapid drop of progesterone that happens in the late luteal phase, we could be having sleep disturbances. I guess all I wanted to say about this is that um, as sleep disturbances and blood sugar imbalances sometimes go hand in hand. So if your client is having a lot of cravings and they report that they only got like six hours of sleep and they had restless sleep or stuff like that, make sure that you're helping them do the proper interventions to mitigate that. So I guess I'll go into the proper interventions too. Remember vitamin D has progesterone like activities in the late luteal phase, uh, progesterone is decreasing. And so helping them get enough vitamin D throughout their luteal phase is going to be really great. Don't just wait until the late luteal phase. So we have that also balancing the blood sugar is going to be incredibly helpful because, um, with sleep disturbances, sometimes they happen when our blood, when our blood sugar dips, blood sugar dips, cortisol rises and cortisol is the wiggy, wiggy eggs and bakey hormone. And so that wakes us up, right? In addition to that, I myself have noticed a lot of success as well as my clients. They've noticed a lot of success using tart cherry juice as a sort of sleep aid because tart cherry juice increases melatonin. Melatonin helps us go to sleep. And then the, um, the neurotransmitter GABA helps us stay asleep as well. And so um, in extreme cases, you might recommend a GABA supplement to your clients. That's just, that's not where to start. Start with balancing the blood sugar and then maybe use the tart cherry juice intervention and go from there. So let's do a quick review of what we covered so far today. In the menstrual phase, we have increased delayed onset muscle soreness, an increase in anaerobic and aerobic performance, and to get enough iron and vitamin C along with complex carbs during that phase of the cycle is an awesome thing. Let's lump the follicular and ovulatory phase together because hormonally they're very similar. Um, hormones, estrogen and testosterone are rising to get a simple carb meal prior to exercise and a complex carb meal after exercise is going to really serve your clients. In the luteal phase, we have that increase in progesterone that we need to support and we can do that with vitamin D um, and preventing PMS for your clients. It should be a part of your nutrition strategy as a personal trainer and fitness coach. And we can do that by increasing magnesium intake, vitamin D, which I already mentioned, omega-3s and amino acids. And if you want to learn more about the luteal phase, make sure to watch this video next. Uh, thank you so much for being here. And again, if you are totally into this and want to get your certification as a menstrual cycle coach, make sure to apply using the link down below. And if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you subscribe to this channel so that you can be sent more ways to optimize and balance your clients' hormones. Thanks so much for being here and I will see you in the next video. Bye.